us appreciate you very, very much. Um, well, you're going to start seeing the new SES sheets come in soon. How many of you have already seen some of the new ones come in? We didn't have any of the new ones with the new ones. Jason, do the new ones do uh, not yet. Everything's still the same right now. Okay. Well, they will, they will start coming in. If any of you do not have one of the pocket cards that I gave you last year, or if you're new and you have not gotten a pocket card that has all the pictograms and everything on it, please pick one of these up. I'll put them back there with Lisa so that you can pick one up and then so that you will understand the pictograms. And if any of you uh, pet custodians at your schools, if you have not gotten a poster, that we fixed for you, one of the large posters to put up in the uh, in your uh, custodial room. Please let me or Donna Myers know, and we will get those to you. Okay? So that takes care of SD. Be sure and get a card today if you do not have one. Uh, you now should all have an email so that Dr. Mara and everyone else can get in touch with you easily. So if you do not have an email address. Please let uh, the head custodian know, and then uh, the head custodian can let uh, uh, the principal know so that you can get your email address because, uh, one, you need to be doing your online training, uh, with, and you have to go through your email address to get to that. So when we get through with this today, uh, and you don't have to do it today, but sometime in the near future, if you've not, if you've not done the bundle packaging online, you'll need to do that as well. Um, so I want you to be sure you've got that email address. Um, red bags. The decision has been made, and, I, and you got an email about this, but I wanted to say it to you in person. I'm still old-fashioned. Can everybody hear me okay? Um, the red bags now go in the regular dumpster. And I know you've all been told that, but I, I wanted you to hear me say it with all of us together in case you have any questions for me. Um, and we have ordered, Jason has ordered, the stainless steel trash cans, and they have to have a lid, and uh, those are the ones that are at changing stations, where we have students that are in cotton, and that they have to have diaper changes. Those, all of those stations should have one of those stainless steel trash cans that Jason ordered. If you know of an area where they change diapers, that there is not one of those with a lid on it then uh, you let Jason know and he will get one. Jason, those have been delivered, right? Yes. And those keep the red bag in it. OSHA does want us to continue to put everything in a red bag, even because it, it is a potential blood more packaging situation. But because we consider low volume, we do not have to take the, uh, as much precaution as like a hospital would with red bags. But it still is a reminder to those employees who are changing uh, those diapers, it is a reminder that they have to put on the red bag that they need to be very careful. So they have all gotten training. And so just make sure you're using them. If you don't have one at every station, uh, make sure that you get one. Uh, another thing I want to mention to you is near misses and hazards that you observe. Please report those. Please report those if the work order or uh, uh, address what the needs are for those. Okay, thank you very much. Blood work pathogens. Again, I'll try to stick to the script so I don't spend all day. The Davidson County School System is committed to providing a safe working environment and strives to eliminate and minimize occupational exposure to hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV or AIDS and other blood work pathogens. And as I tell you every year, and I want to remind you because you are at the highest risk. Uh, you are the top of the uh, category one. All of these can cause serious illnesses and even death. And I have told you before, one of the physicians I work with died of hepatitis C because he broke procedure. And you know, we're hearing about Ebola. Ebola is not here. So we don't have to worry about Ebola, but we still have to be very cautious of other blood pathogens. Exposure can be minimized or eliminated using a combination of universal precautions. Engineering, work practice controls, protective clothing and equipment, training and education, and the hepatitis B vaccine. If any of you have not received the hepatitis B vaccine, I strongly encourage you to do so or be sure you have signed a declaration that you decline to take it. As you know, it's three vaccines, and uh, please sign up for those. Uh, it will be posted in the office whenever those will be given. Using signs and other provisions, 
also help to prevent your exposure. The purpose of this regulation is to outline the exposure control, control plan to be used by Davis County School System and to protect those employees who might be exposed to body fluids in particular, but worn pathogens. This plan is based on written requirements published in the Federal Registry, so it's a law. The exposure control plan should be reviewed and revised annually, so that's what you're here, and that's why I have to be here to talk with you about it. And um, it has to be done, it's supposed to be done every 365 days. And OSHA still requires that a warm body do this for you so that you can ask questions if you have any. Personnel affected or category one or two, and you are category one. But, uh, and again, I will reiterate that the hepatitis B vaccine, I encourage you, but we don't require you, but we encourage you to get that. We can't do anything for hepatitis C except this education. We can't do anything for the AIDS except for preventive measures uh, that we're talking about today. Gloves, you've heard this on the news so much lately, and I know you thought, oh, she said that to us before. It doesn't matter how you put it on, just so you put it on and cover your skin, correct? What matters? How you take it off. And you've heard me say that every year that I've been here, haven't you? So I want to reiterate how important it is that you remove your gloves properly. Be sure you're covering your wrist. But you need to be sure you remove your gloves properly. Let's say you've been cleaning up a, a, an incident where there was blood. Okay? So pretend my gloves are bloody. I think uh, Sergeant Cooper, I can't even say his last name, Cooper, he put uh, chocolate pudding, I think, on his hands, if y'all saw that on, the, on CNN, to demonstrate. So make sure you have your wrist covered well. One, make sure you've got your gloves on at all times when you need to have them on, right? Okay, then do not get anywhere near the skin when you're using this glove with potential blood on it or with blood on it. Be sure you reach, I like that you reach it in your palm. Can everybody see where I'm telling you? Okay. And it pull off and you know it always catches my readiness. If it then wad it up in your hand like this, so that that mess is not dripping or has, doesn't have the potential of contaminating this hand. Now this hand is considered, considered clean and we do not want to contaminate it. Then reach under. So I him, he did it wrong. He did it like this and I could see where he, and he did one time. He admitted he got some chocolate on his fingers. Do this and keep these fingers, do you see how I'm keeping them out of the way? Keep those fingers out of the way, go under, Pull out no popping and snapping because you know that if you do pop and snap and you get it uh, in your eyes or your nose or your mouth, what is that? That, that is an exposure to the right. Then these go where if it's blood? They go in the red bag. They go in the red bag. That way, why do I like everybody put anything like that in a red bag even though we're putting in the red trash? It is to protect you. When you see a red bag, what do you know? You know to be very cautious. Okay, so any questions about the gloves? Done. What do you do as soon as you take the gloves off? Wash your hands. How long? As long as it, I'd say as long as it takes us to send happy birthday twice. Because I want you to wash them long enough with warm, soapy water. So make sure that your sink that you wash your hands in provides you warm so water. So wash your hands with warm soapy water. Then when you dry your hands, what do you turn off the faucet with? Wow. A dry paper towel. A dry paper towel because the germs can go through a wet paper towel. So be sure to turn off the faucet with a dry paper towel after you uh, wash your hands. If you are somewhere in a situation where there is not a sink, what do you use? The hand sanitizer. But as soon as you get to a sink with warm soapy water, what do you do? Wash your hands. So if you are called to a situation where body fluids got out, we know we wish they wouldn't. But if you're called to a situation where uh, body fluids get out, then uh, you know that you get your bucket. And we know that it's necessary for you to put the granular solution liberally. Have, oh, I have a question. Have you ever not had enough of this? What, did you just go get another container? Because I, I wonder if this is always enough for a large 
spill a large situation. So put it up on Liberty for it to be solidified, and then you will scoop it up and scoop it up with your super duper scooper. And then do you just throw these away? I think? Just throw your scooper away and once you get it up with them. All this goes where? In the red bag. If you suspect something's going on and you suspect there's a, a situation where you think you might get it in your eyes or nose or mouth, you have goggles in your uh, custodial bucket and you have masks. So use those because that is an exposure that gets in uh, the membrane. So use what you're provided. Also, in your bucket, you have a gown that you can put on, uh, a plastic gown that you can put on to protect you. All right, after you have put the solution, covered the uh, liquids, then, and scraped them up, is it clean yet? No. Then you use your cleanser, and we all know that we only use what is provided by the school, and then you use your disinfectant. And you make sure that it's very clean. Never let a student assist you in cleaning up. I know you know that, but we still have to say it. So never let anyone who's not trained assist you in cleaning them up. Any questions about that? And I've always told the first aid providers and everyone else that I can speak with to call you to do this because it's your specialty, specialty and you have the special method. <clears throat> sharp objects, you know, always go in a sharps container. And we were also told that the sharps containers can go into the regular trash. Do I have issues with that? Do you have issues with that? But it is the OSHA regulations and it's the regulations uh, also with our, uh, our landfill. <clears throat> we have the Blood More Pathogen book. It will uh, soon be online and uh, we have it ready, ready action to go and be put online. But if there is a hard copy in the doctor's office. I mean, the doctor's office. In the principal's office, I'm digressing back to your <coughs> In the principal's office and also you should have one uh, in your study. Uh, if you ever anticipate, if you're coughing, you anticipate that there might be a blood borne pathogen situation, please grab your gloves and take them with you. I would like for you to have some on your person all the time, if that's possible, in your pockets or somewhere. Um, and then dispose of them properly as we said. All right, if you, if you have been exposed, please report that immediately. We want the source sent to the doctor within two hours. This is a CDC regulation that within 24 hours we have the blood work back. If we do not get the source, the person whose body fluid you were exposed to, to, the, uh, to their health care provider within a couple of hours, then there's a likelihood we're not going to have the results back within that 24 hours. And if you would happen to be, it's very unlikely, but if you would happen to be exposed to someone who has HIV in their blood, then we've got to get you treated within that 24-hour period. So that's why we have that little 24-hour, two-hour rule uh, that OSHA recommends and uh, that CDC, it used to be a regulation, but they now suggest that you get the source there within uh, two hours. Sometimes that's not possible, especially if it's a student. Uh, we have to get the parents there. But I hope that, that uh, we can get the source there within two hours so that we will know within that 24 hour period if we need to treat you for anything. Um, but you have to report it immediately if you get an exposure. Does everybody understand how important that is? Uh, because we've got, you've got to have your blood work done and they do as well. Um, and um, we have a, a special area that we use in uh, at Thompson Hospital that, uh, that knows how important it is for this time range. Um, if you have started your hepatitis B vaccines, please complete them. You know, it's three injections. The first, a month later the second, and then five months later the third. If you got the first one and it's been a year or two and you never got the second one, our health department is really good about not making you start all over. You can just go in and get that second, but be sure that you get them done if you have chosen to have them done. The only time you would not have it done is if you are pregnant, anticipating pregnancy, or breastfeeding. So those are the, the three reasons that we would not uh, recommend at this time that you would get them. Uh, and again, we have to get a consent or defined form 
sign. So if you're new, be sure that you sign either a consent to have the hepatitis B or a declination. We have to keep those forms. We have to keep all information about exposures for 30 years. Uh, be sure that you do your online level pathogen training uh, online. And now you have an email address. And you can do that. And you can do all your other training, as I said earlier. Uh, annually, you're required to do that online, and you're, and you're required to have uh, the, the live training. Uh, do you, this is the reason I have to be here and do this. Do you have any questions? If you do, do not hesitate to call me. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I will mention to you that there is, at this time, no booster. There is still no booster required for hepatitis B. If you get an exposure, they'll check and see if your titer, your antibody titer is still high enough. If not, they will give you a booster at that time. If CDC decides that you need uh, a booster, they will let us know and we will immediately let you know and we will pay to get that done. Any of the treatment that you have for a blood borne pathogen or your hepatitis B vaccine, all that is free to you. You cannot be charged anything for that. And we have to pay your insurance 100%. Or, and if we don't pay it 100%, then uh, we have to pay for your hepatitis B injections. So those are just some things that you need to know. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. How many of y'all have found your bucket? I love that. You need to locate these and update them. They're your friend. Okay? You should be wanted. Gym area and somewhere across the middle of the school. These chemicals have a date on them. You need to be sure that they're in date. Okay. Notice these have a green label. You can probably have some in your bucket. It's got a blue label on them. Please find these buckets and update them. I've looked at them through the school. Some of them they don't even have nothing else. Okay. Response time. When the, when the office calls you for a cleanup, you need to respond quickly. Because well, you know, one season, another one's going to think about it and they're going to do it. It's contagious. So you need, to, you need to jump on those spills immediately. And do not use a vacuum cleaner to get up and throw it. Okay? That's not what a vacuum cleaner is for. 